everybody welcome back to the channel thank you so much for tuning in today i'm super excited about this video it is a sew along this is for the subscriber pick for the month of august it's simplicity 9325 thank you all for choosing this pattern when i tell you i didn't know initially but when i tell you this pattern is so super easy to put together it has no closures or anything like that you put it pull it right over your head i am wearing it what i am doing today is just a little bit different i am coming in with this intro um and then i i want to highlight a couple things that I want you to pay attention to when you're putting this pattern together. This is an out of print pattern, but if you have the pattern, I encourage you to go ahead and pull it out because it is super easy. The first thing I wanna highlight is that this particular pattern does call for fabrics that are more drapey, your viscose chali, um, those type, your rayons, uh, woven, this is for woven, um, fabrics and so I did not use a drapey fabric I am wearing and at the end of the video pay attention to the timestamps uh, down below I will have a full review and then also pictures and twirls and everything of me in the dress but I used an Ankara print and so I will you will see just because the pattern and it will look absolutely beautiful and something more drapey and more fluid um, but it looks just as beautiful in in an Ankara fabric which is a cotton which is a little bit more stable doesn't have as much movement so that's the first thing the second thing I want to point out and again pay attention to the uh, timestamps I'm saying this for a reason there is an error in this pattern and I want to take you straight to the error it is step three <clears throat> it, it no I'm sorry it is step four where it has you attach the um, inset piece and then um, step nine eight and nine when you get ready to attach the facing go to that I will label it probably error um, and the fix and my fix the error and my fix and so watch that so you kind of see what the error is. I went through the instructions um, just because I couldn't really figure out how to explain it without actually showing you. <laughs> so I went through and did as the instructions suggested, but then there are some steps um, further down where it's like, okay, that didn't make sense to do it that way, but that is the fix. So make sure you go straight over to the error and then start over, but watch it from the beginning. The next thing I want to highlight is the, um, I highly suggest that you put your bodice, uh, top front and your midriff pieces together, um, take them together, the pattern pieces together and hold them to your body wearing the bra that you would normally wear in that dress or couple bras, which types of bras you will wear in the dress. So you're, you know where the midriff is hitting. That midriff should be hitting right under your bust. And so um, that is something I highly recommend. Super easy to do, cut out your size, take the pieces together, and then just see where that midriff piece is falling. But yeah, that's all I have to say to start out. Let's jump into the sew along and then at the end, I'll give you a full pattern review and give you all the deets on this look. Welcome everybody. We are going to jump right into this sew along. This is for Simplicity 9325. I have made some notes. One of the first things I want to suggest to you is make sure you cut out all of your pattern pieces. Depending on the size that you cut, one of the things you might want to consider doing to test fit, a tissue fit, is tape your piece three and your piece one together. But keep in mind that piece one has to be gathered to fit two piece three so you do um, just want to make sure that as you kind of move this along that the the notches do match up and then just make sure kind of tape it um, 
to your body, put it next to your body just to make sure that it's hitting where you want. I think for me, after looking at it, I am fine with how this will turn out. For sizing, I have the packet that goes from size 10 through 18. And on this particular size pack, you will notice that the bust measurement for 18, this is a finished garment measurement, is at 48 inches. My bust is at a 45. And so that's giving me three inches of ease. So I am going to stick with that for the entire dress, actually. I am not going to, typically for narrow shoulders, I would, um, go at a smaller size at the shoulder but from the look of this i am doing again view c if i did not mention that it has a little ruffle um here on the side i am going to be perfectly fine with this so i am not going to make any adjustments to the pattern another good thing about this pattern that you will love there are no closures none whatsoever you just have the tie that goes in at the waist after looking through the directions and everything this is going to be a pretty easy make so go right ahead cut out all of your pattern pieces depending on which version you are doing again i am doing view c for my first version i will be doing a second version view b but that will not be a part of the sew along the sew along will be for version c so let's go ahead and get all of our pattern pieces cut out for fabric, I am using this beautiful Ankara. It is actually a print with different um, size rectangles and squares and designs in it. And for those who may not be familiar with Ankara, but those who are, you know that the Ankara, the right and wrong side look exactly the same. So one thing I would suggest is if you are not using a fabric like this, that the wrong side and the right side looks the same or very similar for piece number 11, I will cut out four of these. And that's to make sure once the ruffle is attached. So again, looking at view C, the ruffle that's attached on the sleeve it will look the same on both sides. You will have the ruffle on the next to the shoulder and the ruffle facing outward will look exactly the same if you double up the fabric pieces. And then if you do double up the fabric pieces, all you're doing is just sewing them um, wrong sides together so both sides is the right side of the fabric before you attach it. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, depending on the fabric that you're using and also because I am using Ankara this is a 45 uh, width inch width fabric and so I may just because of the fabric choice I'm using and the width is only 45 inches when I do need to cut out the bottom of the skirt um, piece number four I may have to turn my fabric lengthwise um, so to make sure that I can fit the skirt on there. I don't know if it'll fit on this 45. We shall see. But yeah, once I get everything cut out, I will show you how it all turned out.
okay so I just want to come in real quick to share with you why I was doing the kind of pattern Tetris with the fabric because I know view C this is the line for view C was a little shorter than I wanted and I wanted to make sure me adding three inches I still had enough fabric to do the whole dress and I do <laughs> which I'm excited about but what I'm doing is and again this is 45 with fabric and um, so what I did was mark down three inches below um, view C line and I pinned it and so when I cut this I'm just gonna gently lift up this here paper and just cut along those dotted lines underneath I'm not gonna adjust this here the actual pattern because I will be making another dress another view of this right after this and I actually want to use these different sections for something um, for that dress so that is why I was playing pattern Tetris and it worked okay I would recommend for having cut out the lower front piece which is piece number four keeping in mind that you will need to gather but my recommendation because there are no closures or fasteners or anything on this front piece that um piece four depending on your fabric I'm not worried about my fabric because it has so many different designs in it it'll be fine but you might want to consider cutting it out on the fold it has you cut two pieces but I'm not yeah I don't think that's necessary I would just say cut this out on the fold obviously take into account your seam allowance you don't want to have extra seam allowance in there um, but yeah I would say cut piece four on the fold that's my recommendation okay everybody let's get to sewing remember I am doing view C which is the sleeveless version go ahead and grab um, your front upper front piece and what we're going to do is stay stitch as the directions say so that's using a shorter stitch length about I would say 1.5 one to 1.5 and you're gonna um, stay stitch from here to about a couple inches above the large dot and speaking of which make sure you have marked all of your um, notches and your dots because this will be important when we get to the part where we attach the inset piece and then what we're going to do is gather so you will notice on the front piece it says to gather between the notches so you're going to run two rows of gathering stitches between the notches I cut out size 18 so of course I'm going to run my gathering stitches from here all the way to here um, and then we'll have our gathering stitches uh, ready when we get to that part when we need to attach it to the piece that goes below it so starting out go ahead and let's stay stitch from up top to about right here and then put our gathering stitches in here Okay, hopefully you can tell I know my my fabric is a little busy but you see my stay stitch line again about one to one and a half um, stitch length and then use your longest stitch length to go ahead and gather between the notches which you can see here make sure you have your nice long tails so you'll be able to gather easily but make sure you have your two rows of stitching now let's go ahead and grab our inset piece okay now that you have your inset piece again make sure your notches are marked and make sure your dots are marked 
using whatever fabric marker you can see on both sides mine are marked keep in mind I am using Ankara so the right and wrong side for me looks exactly the same when I cut my pieces out I cut them out on the wrong side so that's how I do it but take your inset piece put them right sides together and mine are already right sides together and what you're going to do is stitch them along the edge here from dot to dot you want to go ahead um, backstitch from start to finish here and then what you're going to do is under stitch and so um, before turning it to the right side um, and pressing and then you're going to baste along the edges but let's take your first step go ahead and stitch across the top okay so I've just stitched across the top as you can see my stitch line here and what you want to do is then trim the seam I would say down to about 3 8 um, inch so go ahead and just trim that seam all the way Go ahead and trim the seam and then you're going to under stitch the facing and so what that means is let me just take this out so then what you're going to do is go ahead open it up and I would suggest pressing this to one side and then stitching what you're going to do is just stitch right along here you see that seam you're just going to stitch right along there and then once you have completed that you're going to fold it and this is just so the um inside of the inset doesn't roll out um when wearing and so once you go ahead and stitch that and you fold it over you'll notice that that side kind of rolls up just a little bit which is fine and then what you're going to do is make sure you press it and then you're going to baste all the raw edges so when you baste you're using about a uh, your longest stitch length on your machine and what you're going to do let me try to hold this up you're going to base stitch all of the raw edges so down this way across here and down this side okay so here is the under stitching I've already pressed the seam over and what you want to do is stitch that seam down which is known as under stitching and I'm using a regular stitch length just so you can see I tend to start and stop the back stitch at the beginning and end but this is what it looks like once it's under stitch you can see that line of stitching right there now go ahead and fold it right sides together and you see that under stitching right there so this will be your the part that's facing out on the fabric and this will be facing towards you this will be essentially the wrong side of the inset piece so go ahead and give it a good press and then stitch your um, baste your raw edges together and then we'll go to the next step so once your edges are basted you can use as a guide if you need um, help and a reminder where your dots were at the top because now you're going to use this inset and attach it to your front uh, bodice pieces and so what I've done here just for just to show you is I've remarked here for purposes of the video where the dots would be which is really at the top of this piece because remember that was folded over and so those dots would have landed about right here and so we're going to use these two dots and the dots that are marked on our front bodice piece which I'll grab okay so these are my front pieces and this is on the wrong side and the way you can tell it's on the wrong side is I have my dots here so make sure your dots are marked on the wrong side of the bodice okay so you have your wrong side 
with your dot for your front bodice, your left and right, you go ahead and apply the inset right sides together. And you see the dot, I made the dot here at the top just for um, demonstration purposes, but that would match where your dot is marked on your bodice here. And all you're doing is back stitching from the top down and you're just doing a basting stitch. The instructions call for a basting stitch. So that's what you're gonna do both to the left and the right side of the inset attaching to your front bodice. So this is what it looks like from the wrong side that's attached and your notches will be matching as well on both sides. And this is what it would look like from the front. So now you have all of your inset and your two front bodice pieces. Now we're going to go ahead and go to the back piece. Okay, so grab piece number five, which is your back. And you remember you have your dot here. What you want to do is again, like you did the front stay stitch. So that's between one and one and a half stitch length from here up or from the top down um, is what they show from the top down and then because right sides are together from here down you want to go ahead and stitch the back pieces together all the way down the center back and remember this is your center back because you have the markings here the notches here to let you know that that is the center back and then we will be moving on to attaching this to the shoulders. Now keep in mind during this pattern it doesn't call for finishing off seams or anything like that so what I will begin doing is using my serger to go ahead and finish off the seams um, for the back center seam for the shoulder seams and so I will go ahead and take care of all of my stitching. I'm first going to go ahead and stay stitch both back pieces the back neckline here from here down stay stitch again between one and one and a half stitch length and then sew your back center back seam together and then finish off your seams however it is that you choose to finish them off I will be using a serger and I will show you what that looks like when that's done Okay, grab your front pieces here that has the inset, right side facing, and the right side of the back piece that you would have just stitched together. And go ahead and attach at the shoulders. Okay, so I have surged and I tried to use a thread perhaps that you can see because I know the print is a little busy, but I went ahead and surged the back, went ahead and surged my shoulder seams. Don't forget to press your seams. So all of your seams, press your shoulder seams to the back and your back seam, just press it to one side, but make sure you are pressing as you are going. Okay, grab your pieces, piece number seven and piece number eight. So for the instructions, you see here I've already cut out my interfacing and my pieces for demonstration purposes of the video. However, for piece seven and eight, what the instructions will have you do, as you notice these notch edges, these are seams that you will be bringing together. So what the instructions would have you to do, because you have two 
cut two of fabric and two of interfacing. And so the instructions would have you apply the interfacing and then sew half inch or I'm sorry, five eighth inch along the seam here to combine seven and eight together. However, what I am going to do is a little bit different because I do not like raw edges of facings showing on the inside and you most certainly can use bias binding you can most certainly serge your edge but for me to have a clean finish what I am actually going to do is the side that is not notched which is down here you have the notched end because the notch end attaches to the actual garment right and so you have to match up your notches there and so having said that what i will do and i'm actually going to just show you it's easier it's probably easier to show on this piece because it's curved the unnotched edge what you want to do is take your interfacing and you have and for me i use scraps of interfacing so you will see i don't have a full piece of interfacing going all the way to the end which is fine um so and let me hold this piece here so you can see so this is the unnotched edge and this is the notched edge so what i am going to do with the wrong side and remember i'm using ankara so obviously you can't tell the right and wrong side but this is the wrong side of my fabric what i will do is turn my piece to the right side now this is right side facing and i will also turn my let me grab the right piece here my interfacing again my interfacing doesn't go all the way to the end which is fine um, i'm not worried about that but what i will do then is stitch the unnotched edge and it's going to be right side of the interfacing to right side of the fabric and so the wrong side of the interfacing is the part that you feel the glue um, on that side so once it's stitched and i'm just gonna put a pin here so you can kind of see and i will stitch it um at three eighths and then because this is a curve i will clip into the curve but once you stitch that in place and then you put them wrong sides together to adhere the interfacing to the garment or to the facing piece it'll end up like this and then that edge is super clean so when you do attach it to your garment you don't have to worry about finishing off this edge or turning it under the instructions have you turn it under um, a quarter of an inch stitch and turn it under so it's a clean um, edge finish totally up to you but that is what I am going to do to both my pieces piece number eight and piece number seven and I will show you what that looks like as soon as I'm done okay just so you can see I went ahead and stitched it here and I clipped into the curve what I am going to do now is just turn this over at my sewing machine I'm sorry at my um, ironing board and then press to attach the interfacing and if you find that you have a little interfacing showing obviously just clip that off but that will be attached as so and so now we have a clean finish on that side i'll do that for both of these pieces and then we will move on to the next step and again do the same thing for piece number seven okay so once you have all of your pieces interface eight and seven you are now going to attach piece eight and seven at the notch marks so this is how this will look so this is the right side obviously so take your piece both of the notches you have a notch on this end and a notch on this end here and those are the two that you would uh, stitch together I'm just going to add a clip here a 
like so. And then you're going to sew that at 5 8 inch. So do that for both pieces. Matching up your notches. So now you have, once you've stitched both of these pieces together, the next step that you'll be doing is part of, still part of step seven. And so you are going to combine these right sides together and that curved in here, this is where you are going to stitch. So remember you had the dot, the end where the dot was, go ahead and stitch from your marking all the way to the end at 5 8 inch seam allowance and then go ahead and grab your bodice piece because then you're going to attach. But go ahead, stitch at the center, the shoulders together and then uh, stitch right down the middle from the dot to the end. Okay, so now you have seven and eight combined. They're stitched together and this is how it's looking. Make sure you're pressing your seam so everything can lay nicely when you attach it. Now we need to grab our bodice piece because what we are going to do is with right sides together, these raw edges here, you're going to attach them to the raw edge of your bodice with the right side of your bodice facing. And then you're going to pin the facing to the neck edge, matching your seams and small and large dots. You can barely see my dots on here, but my dots are marked on here and you want to stitch the neck edge. Now, when the instructions say breaking and reinforcing stitching at the small dot, that just means going, um, doing a, a back stitch forward in the back stitch. And then what you're going to do is clip your seams and then um, it says to under stitch as far as you possibly can. So let's go ahead and start putting that together. Okay, so here is the point in the sew along where I think the instructions were misleading, but I wanted to go through the steps so you can at least see and know where to make your own correction. So we are at step number eight where we're attaching the pieces seven and eight to the neckline. This is right side of the dress right side of the facing pieces and you attach. So I did this side just so you can see, um, but you attach making sure your seam here matches up with your shoulder seam, which it should, um, and all of that. And according to the instructions, then you will be able to go all the way down like so. However, if you continue to read the instructions, you will have to turn the facing piece all the way inside, correct? Well, remember, go back to step number four. You attached the inset at that point. So if you are attaching this piece now and you're stitching all the way down, one, you're stitching through which you've already done where you based it the inset and then once you attach this and turn it you can't turn it in because the inset is in the way <laughs> so i think and i've reread it just to be sure but i believe that is a, an error in the pattern so what i am doing i did this side just so you can see what i am doing still attaching it because that's normal but there is a dot on this side if you remember where the inset piece was on the main pattern piece there was a dot and also on um this piece there's a dot right and so you know once you stitch down you're supposed to be able to turn this all the way in but how would you attach the inset at that point well it will have to be sandwiched in between these pieces so what i am going to do is go ahead and stitch it to approximately maybe an inch above the dot and i'm gonna do as the instructions say and clip into the curve and all of that and do the the under stitching however I am going to, once I turn this in, I will, let me straighten this out. I will, on this end, this much from here to about here, 
which is above that dot. You, can, you can't see my dot, but I will turn it in and also make sure this is turned in along this edge the right amount and I will insert my inset so it's sitting in the right spot. So when I turn this all the way in like so, this will be sitting in between the facing and the bodice piece. So once I do that, I will show you what that looks like. Okay, so this is how it's looking. I have attached it and clipped all the way around. So when I got to the dot, what I did was press the seam allowance over for the facing. And then this is the bodice piece. This is the right side. The wrong side, I turned it in seam allowance. So now these pieces are together like this. So remember, this is the right side facing because you're going to end up turning all of this in like so, right? Per the instructions. And you have that opening down here at the bottom. You want to go ahead and slide your piece in here like so. So once you've laid your piece in there like so then you are going to turn this and I'm going to try to turn this gently where all three pieces now are together so you have the wrong side where the facing is then you have your piece in the middle like so as you can see and you're going to continue stitching up to that dot and then once you have that stitched together your inset will be where it is supposed to be so that is the error I noticed in the pattern so go ahead and do that attach these pieces and then we will get to the midriff we're almost to the finish line okay so your facing is now attached and turned inwards this is the right side of the dress this is the back because that's where the V is and that's the front so you can see how that inset is enclosed because this is the wrong side and see how the wrong side of that facing is nice and clean that is what I wanted let me flip this around to the front okay so and this is the front part so as you can tell Every the facing is turned inwards. So now grab your, <clears throat> excuse me, your midriff piece, which is the front. You have two pieces. One has interfacing and the other one does not. The one that does not will be treated as your facing piece. And remember we had those gathering stitches here. So what I've done, so I know how much to gather, I have laid my pieces. This is the bodice facing right side up and my midriff piece right side up. What I am going to do first is just gather it just to make sure it's going to sit right. Um, and then what you're going to do is pin these wrong sides, right sides together. So let me do that. Go ahead and gather in between the notches where you had your gathering stitches. Make sure it fits to the midriff piece. And then we're going to clip it to the bodice piece. Okay, so like I said, you went ahead and gathered and I turned this to the wrong side. So this is the wrong side of the midriff and the wrong side of the bodice uh, front there and so I've gathered it making sure my side seams match and so now what they want you to do is put these right sides together and stitch all the way across let me pin this together so you know how that looks so as you can see here I went ahead and pinned right sides together they want you just to base this edge all the way and then this edge, they want you to fold up the seam allowance. So 5 8 inch seam allowance and then trim it down to 3 8 inch. And as you can tell, this is basted. I went ahead and turned this in up 5 8 inch and then clipped those pieces. And this is continuing with step number 12. The next thing you want to do 
is with right sides together and raw edges even pin the facing to the lower edge of the midriff over the wrong side of the bodice matching centers and stitch so take your other facing piece which is here and this is as you can tell the wrong side of the other uh, midriff piece and you're pretty all you're doing is sandwiching the bodice in between those two pieces so here is the bodice in the middle and then here's the midriff facing and then the midriff piece and so what you're going to do is stitch all the way across and then all you're going to do is press it down that's all you're going to do then is press it down okay this next part is pretty easy this is your front piece go ahead and grab your front piece with your right sides together this is the top and so you have your notches in that front hopefully you should you should, can see that go ahead and stitch all the way down to the hem and then across the top you're going to stay stitch and then from notch to notch there's a notch here and a notch here is where you're going to do gathering stitches So this is how we're looking. I went ahead and attached, gathered and attached the lower front to the midriff. And once we stitch all of that in place, then make sure you um, turn this down because once you turn this up and this down, then that will cover that entire seam. And then it says to go ahead and do hand stitching all the way around. I have a busy print. I am just going to stitch mine down. So I will show you what that looks like once I am done. And quick tip, if you do not want to slip stitch like me, I am using, you can use heat bond or stitch witchery, whatever you have, and lay it in between here so it adheres for you and it won't shift but at least it'll be in place and then what I will do from the right side is stitch um, as close to in the ditch all the way across to make sure it it's, um, stays in place and does not move okay so here it is I have stitched as close to in the ditch pretty good you can see just a little bit there wasn't quite perfect but that is okay this is a busy print and that's how it looks from the wrong side so what you want to do is grab your um we are at step number 19 go ahead well actually we're at step number 17 grab your um ties and go ahead and follow the steps i won't show that on camera because that's pretty self-explanatory so go ahead and do step 17 step 18 and then we'll come back at step 19. okay we are at step number 19. this is where you add the waist ties so this is the part i wanted to show although you do, did have your markings on your pattern where the waist ties would go i highly suggest you measure on your body because i have a shorter torso so sometimes where waist ties are marked to go on the pattern might be too high or too low uh, for me so what i did was just measure on my body and made sure to measure from here down taking account the seam allowance down where i want my waist ties to start to make sure they pretty much hit in the place that i'm comfortable with and they're not too far up or too far down so i suggest that you do that 
and go ahead and attach your waist ties to the right side of the back bodice piece. You're going to attach and then all you're going to do is put your front bodice and your right and your back bodice right sides together and stitch the side seams together. And then we will be, and remember I'm doing view C, so we are then going to skip all the way down to step number 29. Okay, we are almost at the end. We are on step 29. This is where you will do the ruffle and what they call the facing piece, which is really a binding piece. But first grab your uh, piece number 11 and I did um, or I should have stated if you plan if you do not have Ankara like I am using which the right and wrong sides um, look exactly the same um, I wrote a note on here cut four so then you would double this up and make sure that no matter what side of your ruffle is showing on your garment it's always the right side of the fabric but I am using Ankara, so I just cut the pieces as the pattern calls for, which is cut two. And what they want you to do, let me move my pen here. So what they want you to do, this is your notched edge at the top. So I'm just going to move this up. And so what they want you to do is make a, what they want you to do is make a, um, narrow hem on this bottom edge so they want you they say to turn in turn up hem on this lower edge okay so your ruffle piece you would have turned it under this is how it looks from the right side so you would have stitched it in place so you don't have a raw edge and then you would have created your gather stitches here so they have you attach it interestingly so grab your dress with the right side out okay so this is my my dress this is the right side out here is the ruffle piece and so I kind of colored this in so you can see what they want you to do is actually match up that dot that you would have marked on your ruffle to your shoulder seam so this is what it will look like. So you would have attached your ruffle. Here's my dot. That's my shoulder seam. And then what they want you to do is that that raw edge down here, which is quite interesting. They want you to, and you will tell in the picture for this step, they want you to that end of the ruffle piece at the side seam to make sure that that meets up here and same thing on the other side so they overlap at that side seam ever so slightly and that's how it looks in the picture and then for all of that other area that's where the gathering comes in so go ahead and take your time sit at your machine and just gather all of this so it fits together because then you're just going to stitch all of that in place so again, take your time. You see it doesn't meet now, but again, you have those gathering stitches in the ruffle. You're going to gather to meet the arm side all the way around in between where that dot is as well as on the ends. Okay, so see how I went ahead and gathered it all the way around. That dot is up here at the shoulder seam. I gathered all of that excess in and now only th thing we're going to do is go ahead and stitch all of this in place with a basting stitch. So that's how it looks. Use your basting stitch and go ahead and sew all the way around and do this for both sides. Okay, so for that part that did overlap, I went ahead and sewed the edges together because I found once I flipped it out, that raw edge was showing, and so I didn't like that. So I went ahead and just stitched that. So now that your ruffle is attached to the bodice, go ahead and grab your last pattern piece, which is piece number nine. It's the armhole facing which we will be attaching so grab that and let's finish out this this is now step 31 
Okay, it's a little later in the day. We are at step 31. This is the end before the hem. So what we are doing is you have your two pieces, piece number nine, and what you're going to do is stitch them right sides together at the ends. So right sides together, you are going to stitch the ends together and then you're going to put wrong sides together and press press those together and this is what it looks like after those pieces have been sewn together at the ends and turned to the wrong sides and making sure that it's nice and pressed go ahead and grab your dress Okay, this is step 31 and step 32, which is pretty much finishing the dress. The hem you can do on your own. I won't show that here. That would be the final step, step number 34. Uh, decide how you want to do your hem, depending on the type of fabric you use. Either you want to turn it under. For me, with this Ankara, I am going to turn it under. Um, and make a narrow hem at the bottom of my uh, hem of my dress but you can choose to use bias binding or anything like that but let's go ahead and finish off the armholes so you have your piece and I've just attached it here so what you want to do after you have a nice that face they call it a facing piece also could be a binding piece I will say a tip here if you have binding I will go ahead and use binding all around the edge here instead of this piece or if you did cut this piece out I would just create binding out of this piece and attach it that way but let's go ahead and follow <laughs> the instructions so go ahead this is as you can tell the the side seam here um, right underneath the um, underarm piece so you go ahead and add that piece making sure they are lined up Make sure that's focusing for you so you see how everything is lined up there go ahead you're sandwiching that ruffle piece that you just attach so this is the ruffle piece the wrong side as you can tell and you go ahead and put clip here and then clip all the way around what's happening is this piece actually fits the arm side perfectly um, or it should mine do so I'm going to go ahead and as you can tell there is the ruffle in between I am going to go ahead and attach mine all the way around okay so you can see it fits perfectly all the way around so what you're going to do and I'll make sure that that's even but what you're going to do is go ahead and stitch all the way around using the seam allowance all the way around and what they want you to do then is turn this piece all the way in and they're going to want you to stitch on the outside to stop top stitch it excuse me in place so obviously it doesn't move and that's why I said I would just use binding around that so you don't even have to worry about that but we're gonna follow in the instructions you can make your edits as you so please on your next version so I'm gonna go ahead and stitch this around and show you what it looks like okay so this is how it would look once it's done so after you have sewn the facing piece the ruffle was in between right and then you turned the facing piece in and then you top stitch all around the outside of the bodice so this is why I said I would use bias binding either self fabric create your bias binding in your self fabric and do bias binding I actually find this too fiddly um, and this is how it looks on the inside so from the inside yeah it's stitched in all nice you don't see any raw edges but I think it's mu it would be much easier to do bias binding that would encase that raw edge so I am going to do the other sleeve give it a good press 
and then do my hem. And here is the final dress. Stay tuned for full review and pictures. Well, that was super easy, wasn't it, to put together? One of the things I want to mention first before I get in my full review, don't forget to go over to my community tab because that is where I have the selection for the final pattern pick of this quarter for the month of September. Um, I have three doozies over there, a pattern I have the type of garment I have never sewn for myself, um, a proper blazer. So go over, head over to the community tab and pick the September pattern to focus on for the month of September. So um, let's get into the review. So again, super easy to put together, right? Not, a, it's what, 10 pieces if you're doing sleeveless. Um, and so, like I said, the that error in the pattern, <clears throat> I'm not sure, that just didn't make sense and i was thinking okay no because the that's supposed to be completely clean on the front and i'll show you the inside of my garment here and shortly but um yeah so that was my fix if anybody has made this pattern before and you maybe had that issue um in the pattern let me know is that how you would have rectified it but i just wanted to share that and kind of take you and walk you through it um the other thing i wanted to point out is that um for so far as a pattern review outside of step four and nine mainly four is what you don't want to do you can put the inset piece together that's fine but then adding it i would do it over in step nine right but um the interesting thing about the pattern is that it is besides that it's super easy super duper easy i didn't expect a pattern like this when i initially was looking at it i for sure thought it was a zipper somewhere or some kind of closure the fact that you can get it just pull it over your head i thought was brilliant the other thing i want to point out is the bias binding so as you all saw on the so long i did not like those facing pieces in there how they went in um they fit perfectly into the arm side right but then turning it in and then remember you have the top stitch and I know you really can't tell in the fabric that I'm wearing. Um, and this fabric came from, oh, I'm going to have to research and put it on the screen. I don't want to say the wrong fabric company. I might have to look, go back and look at my own um, fabric hauls, but I can't remember which shop I will put on the screen and it will be linked down below. Hopefully I can find it <laughs> where I purchased it from. I thought I had a scrap of this. I think I lost the scrap for this because I know I cut a scrap of this and I put it in my scrapbook so I know where I got it from. Um, and so anyway, I lost that. But um, at any rate, I love how this turned out. Yes, the pattern may call for something more fluid, more drapey and everything. But as you can tell in the Ankara, it works beautifully. It works out beautifully. The other adjustment that I did make, I think I talked about it in the so along, is view C is very short super short and so I just lengthened it between I think it was between three and a quarter and three and a half inches for view C and so um that's the only adjustment I made like I said in the beginning I would put those front pieces where the midriff is and where this front uh piece is um and you can also add the inset just so you know you're comfortable with that whole section um but for me i would be fine with just adding these two pieces because that midriff and i pop up the line drawing the top of that midriff should go under the bust and so let me bring you down a little bit so you can see on me it is not quite doing that I don't think you can tell on me because of the fabric, but let me just sh uh, show you. It is hitting right towards, like, here's the bottom of my bust, but mine is hitting right here. So I need to lengthen this piece down because here's my waist, 
right and so the top of that should be hitting at my waist and it's really high and so that's just one thing I fail to um, measure but I want to make sure point that out to you my dress that and I'll come back up I guess <laughs> You don't have to be down there. Um, my dress that you'll see on Wednesday, my layer cake dress, I would have made that adjustment on the pattern. And so outside of that, um, and again, just if you're full bust, maybe if you're not, um, and you look, you're looking crooked, maybe if you are not um, a D cup or higher you might not have to worry about it but for me yeah it's a lot going on here and um, I should have done that tape that together so I would have known to lengthen this which means you will, will have to adjust your inset piece very easy fixes these are those are all easy things um, to fix um, and so you're just making sure it meets also with the waist ties I mentioned make sure and see here's my waist right here so my waist ties are sitting exactly where i want them to sit i did not want to do like a bow tie for the back um because that seemed a little kiddish to tie it like that <laughs> so i just you know tied a basic knot but let me pop up some pictures um in video so you can see it um other th outside of that i think this is a very very easy pattern i told you guys i want to do all the versions um and yeah i'm gonna keep this pattern nearby because i'm I, today is the sleeveless which i do love the little ruffle piece everything hits um covering up my bra strap so i had i had actually measured that too just to make sure the nice v in the back absolutely love it let me uh, take it off real quick and show you the inside so i have it turned inside out so you can see how that facing looks um once completed just in case you just watching the so long all the way with the review and how my facing look on the inside so as i show share with you in the so along i don't like surging when i have to add a facing piece i don't like surging you could use bias binding like i said but because of the way i put mine in see it's nice and clean it's nice and clean and you don't top stitch that down um and so this is the back let me just show you how the back looks see that doesn't that look good and i um stitched it at the shoulder and at the back center seam down so it doesn't move and then um here's the front so here's where the inset is and where that midriff piece is and you're going to see a thread thing hanging there but that's okay see that so clean see how that inset is in there clean super clean so that's why i did it that way and then um i think i showed you how i put this down i use my heat bond like i normally do but this time i did just top stitch from the front down because you can't if i was off a little bit you can't see it anyway because of the um the print uh, of this particular fabric but I absolutely love it and um, uh, when my husband saw it he was like oh I really like that <laughs> so he liked this a lot and so it is a winner all the way around so you all will have to tag me let me know if you decide to make this uh, dress following the sew along any of the tips help you definitely let me know but don't forget I love it I love it I love it she is gorgeous and i wore today and it is still over 100 degrees so this was absolutely perfect to wear so thank you everybody so much for tuning in and thank you so much for choosing this pattern like i said i want to do all three versions the version you're going to see on wednesday is version b but i do want to do version a and the length of the dresses i think for view b might just be two inches longer um but uh yeah we'll see we'll see by the time i'm recording this i'm working on it and so um where i want the different pieces to go so we'll, we'll see but 
I, I absolutely, I actually really love this pattern. It's just that inset piece that uh, threw things off a little bit. So let me know what you think, everybody. Thank you so much. Don't forget to head over to the community tab to choose the final pattern in focus for the month of September. Head on over there now, but definitely subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, don't forget to thumbs up this video and tune in for Wednesday for the reveal of my layer cake dress. I'm so super excited to share it with you. All right, everybody, you have a blessed start to your week and we will see you on Wednesday. Bye.